Guys, uh, let's do this problem right here. The question is asking uh, find the Egan values, find the Egan vectors, find the basis and the dimension of the Egan spaces. And D question is asking find algebraic and geometric multiplicities, determine if A is diagnosable, diagnosable, and F is find matrices P and D such so that P inverse A P is equal to D, and then find A hundred. So let's see how we can do this. So first of all, let's begin with A. So A question is asking find Egan values. So to find the Egan values, usually we set the determinant equal to zero. Determinant A minus lambda I to equal to zero. In this case, it's three by three matrix, so it's very difficult to find the determinant. That's why they have provided the determinant right here. It's, it's already here, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, worry about solving it's already given if I equalize this one to zero and find the lambda values that's going to be my Egan values so let's see let's do that one so it's going to be lambda minus two lambda minus two and lambda minus one is equal to zero therefore lambda is going to be equal to two and lambda is going to be equal to one so these are my Egan values and the second question is asking find Egan vectors so in this case what we have to do is we have to simply uh, we have to do the null space here so I continue here this side so we have to do null space for this one so in this, in this case what's going to happen is we have to deduct like uh, so a usually this is the formula right determinant a minus lambda i lambda I is basically for 3 by 3 matrices it's going to be lambda time 1 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 0 1 therefore this is these three are going to be lambda. when you multiply this one by lambda it's going to be lambda 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 in the diagonal and others others are going to be zero in this case uh, what i have to do is i, I have to so is in this determinant it's going to be a minus lambda i is going to be zero minus therefore this is going to be zero minus lambda five minus lambda and zero minus lambda so that's how it's going to be and uh, instead of solving in one step I directly substitute these values so it's going to be if I take lambda equal to 2 and if I substitute this value so let's uh, write that one first so it's going to be 0 minus lambda others are going to be remaining the same it's going to be 3 minus 2 and minus 2 5 minus lambda and this is going to be minus 2 and the third one is going to be minus 2 3 0 minus lambda so we just subtract the diagonal because the lambda is going to be only in the diagonal when we multiply the identity by lambda therefore this is my uh, for to find the Egan vectors we have to do the null space for this one so therefore this is going to be 0 0 0 and then uh, I had to for to, lamb to do the lambda 2 I had to substitute uh, 2 instead of lambda lambda so it's going to become 2 3 minus 2 then here it's going to be minus 2 3 minus 2 minus 2 3 minus 2 so in this case this is going to become 0 0 0 0 and this is also minus 2 because 0 minus 2 is only minus 2 if you see all three values are same so therefore if you multiply this one by one of them by negative and add with the second and third all will become 0 except the one so it's going to be minus 2 3 minus 2 0 the bottom all are going to be 0 0 0 and 0 0 0 therefore now it's easy to solve and the, here we are going to have two free variables because we have only one pivot uh, leading one so only one leading one therefore other two are going to be free variables so these two are free variable these two columns are free variables so we can say y comma c are free variables free variables and if I solve the system it's going to become minus 2x plus 3y minus 2z is equal to 0 and I have to write this one in terms of free variable therefore the answer is going to be minus 2x is going to be equal to 3y minus 3y plus 2z 2z then if I divide both of them by negative 2 this one will become 3 by 2 y and this will this will become just 
so this this will become just negative negative c so now uh, now i can write this like this so eigen vectors eigen vectors are equal to 3 by 2 y comma 3 by 2 minus c comma this is my x and y is going to be y c is going to be c because those are free variables and then uh, i can take the common y if i take the y common this will become 3 by 2 then uh, this will become 1 and at the end we don't have any y here so it's going to be 0 then if i take the c common it will this one will become minus 1 then second one 0 because there's no z here so this will become 0 the last one become 1 therefore we can write this one as span of 3 by 2 comma 1 comma 0 and then comma minus 1 0 1 so this is the answer for uh, Egan vectors when lambda is equal to 2 so let's see what happens when lambda is equal to 1 so it's going to be same thing but in, in, in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply substitute uh, 1 for the lambda so this will become minus 1 3 minus 2 and minus 2 5 minus 1 is going to be 4 then here is going to be minus 2 then at the end minus 2 3 and 0 minus 1 is going to be minus 1 so let's see what happens here so if I um, I can I can eliminate first let's make this one into positive so I multiply this one so this is 0 0 0 if we multiply this one by negative it will become positive so 1 3 2 is equal 1 minus 3 2 is equal to 0 then at the second we have minus 2 4 minus 2 0 then we have minus 2 3 minus 1 0 now we have to do the ghost Jordan and if I do the ghost Jordan I will end up with so let's let's do this one okay so if I do the ghost Jordan the final final will be the final will be 1 0 1 0 1 minus 1 and this is going to be 0 0 0 and at the end this is going to be 0 0 0 and you can write this one as x plus c is equal to 0 and we know that this is going to be the free variable because we, we have a leading one right here and also here so this is going to be my free variable so free variable is c so we have to write everything in terms of c so let's see so x is going to be equal to minus z and second equation is going to be y minus z is equal to 0 so therefore y is going to be equal to c so if i write this one everything in terms of free variable is this uh, egan vectors so when uh, lambda is equal to 1 egan vectors equal to this is my x value x is minus z so minus z comma um, uh, y is z so it's going to z z is going to be z it's a pre variable it's going to be itself then if i take the z common it's going to become minus 1 1 1 and we can write this one as span of span of uh, minus 1 1 1 so that's how it's done then uh, the third question is asking find the basis and the dimension of the Egan vectors so for basis is going to be same thing um, maybe since I don't have enough, enough space I write this one here so it's going to be b is equal to instead of span I get rid of this span and write the basis so it's going to be same thing as a span but when you write basis the span will disappear so this will become 3 by 2 1 0 and here we are going to have minus 1 0 1 for the for this one for lambda 1 the c is going to uh, b is going to base is going to be minus 1 
one one that's it so that's how we write the basis and then they are asking for the dimension dimension depends on the free variables so for the lambda is equal to 2 we have two free variables therefore the dimension is equal to 2 equal to 2 for lambda is equal to 1 we have only one free variable therefore the dimension is equal to equal to 1 and there are uh, the next question is asking find algebraic and geometric uh, geometric multiplicities so algebraic algebraic multiplicities depends on the power we have for the determinant so when if you look at the determinant for this one when lambda is equal lambda minus 2 square so this means this is uh, lambda is equal to 2 is the it depends on the power so when you have 2 power it means the algebraic multiplication is 2 algebraic multiplication is 2 and lambda minus 1 it's only power 1 so it's going to be algebraic multiplication of 1 and then next question is geometric multiplicities geometric multiplicities it depends on the dimension for example we found that the uh, dimension of the lambda minus uh, lambda is equal to 2 is dimension 2 therefore so the geometric multiplication is equal to 2 and for the lambda is equal to 1 only dimension is 1 therefore geometric multiplicity is equal to 1 and then they are asking uh, they are asking determine if a is diagonal diagonalizable so diagonalizable depends on the algebraic mul algebraic multiplication and geometric multiplication if both of them are equal for each lambda then it's diagonalizable for example here we have lambda is equal to 2 the algebraic multiplication is 2 the geometric mul multiplicity is 2 uh, therefore these both are equal the lambda is equal for like multiplicity is equal geometric and al algebraic multiplicity is equal therefore this is this uh, according to the con is it satisfies the condition and we have to check the other lambda too so in the second one in algebraic this is a multiplication is one and the geometric multiplication is one therefore these two are equal therefore this will satisfy the condition therefore this is diagonalizable but we have to be careful if one of them comes different for example if we have two two uh, 1 comma 2 if one of them doesn't satisfy the condition then it's not diagonalizable at all so it has to be uh, it has to be equal in both of equal for both of them for lambda is equal to 2 the numbers should be equal and lambda is equal to 1 the numbers should be equal so in this case we have equal numbers for both therefore this is diagonalizable the next question is asking find the matrices p and d such that p inverse a p is equal to d so in this case what you have to do is for p values we can directly put the basis so we just put the basis in a columns column as a column so it's in first column is going to be 3 by 2 1 0 then minus 1 0 1 then the last one is going to be basis of this one so minus 1 1 1 it doesn't matter which uh, the order is not important it's not you can put any where you want but if you put the p like this then the your d should be like this so if you put the 3 by 2 it belongs to the uh, 2 uh, lambda is equal to 2 right so in this case if you put the uh, p uh, lambda is equal to 2 in the first column then you have to put the d uh, lambda is equal to 2 so it's going to be 2 in the first column 2 in the second column and one in the third column because this belongs to one but in case if you put this one front but what's going to happen is this one will go to go to the first one so it depends you can uh, like also you can change the one of these two and put it in the third one then you have to put, bring this two into the third one so you have to change the d according to the p so that's how it's done and this is going to be the answer for the f question and to find the find the a hundred, what we have to do is we have to separate this one. Um, this equation th here we have uh, equation given, so we have to we can find the a hundred using this equation. But in this case, we have to eliminate all the p in uh, in the left hand side and the right hand side of the a. To eliminate that, what I have to do is I have to simply 
multiply this one by p and this one by p inverse so if you do that what's going to happen is uh, if you multiply this side you have to do the same thing in the other side but we have, we have to be very careful that whatever the side we are multiplying it's going to, it should be exactly the same side for other side so if you multiply this one right side uh, left side it's going to be exactly left side of the p should be exactly left side of the b and the final therefore this is going to become a is equal to p p p inverse and if it's a hundred a power hundred it's going to be p times d power hundred p inverse then we already know the p and we have to find the power hundred so it's going to be two power hundred two power hundred one power hundred multiplied by the inverse of this p so that's how we do the last question and that's all i hope you guys like this video see you next time